Hello and welcome to This Podcast Sucks. The show where we take a bite out of the vampire genre. We'll be following all manner of fanged fiends through the past 127 years of film and television. From Nosferatu to Twilight, I'm your host, Tara. And I'm your host, Elliot. Ever wonder how vampires went from burning in the sunlight to sparkling? How they always seem to go from scary to funny to sexy to scary again? And why is a vampire never just a vampire? All of these questions and more will be answered on our journey through this realm of the undead. We'll be talking about the content of these films and TV shows, as well as their production processes, the people behind the projects, and everything from costume design to critical reception. There will be the greatest hits and hopefully some things you've never seen before. When I'm not trying to get a PhD in media studies, I love watching and talking about vampire media, making video essays on my channel, for eyes reviews, and convincing my boyfriend to watch Star Trek Next Generation. I'm a filmmaker, screenwriter, and grad student. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm excited to bring all my queerness to this podcast because, well, vampires are pretty queer. I'm here because, in the immortal words of Angelina Jolie herself, when other little girls wanted to be a ballet dancer, I kind of wanted to be a vampire. So grab your holy water and steaks as we begin, and if you should ever encounter a vampire, remember, eternity only lasts forever. We decided we'd kick off this series with a mini-sode about George Millay's 1896 short film, The House of the Devil. But Elliot, I thought Nosferatu was the first vampire film. Why is this called the first vampire film? That's a great question. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And one that kind of gets to the heart of some of the things that we'll hope to talk about. And so the reason that some people call this film the first vampire film is because the opening shot of the film um, includes a bat flying into a castle and then turning into a man. Um, And some people argue that that means that the film is about a vampire um, because vampires can turn into bats. That's all it takes, I guess. Someone turning into a bat. Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think maybe at the end of the episode we can take a vote and, you know, say whether or not, (laughs) yeah, whether or not we think that this is um, a vampire film or not. Um, But just to offer a little more background on this film, as we said, this was um, released in 1896. Um, This is a silent film because we hadn't developed um, sound recording technology Um, on film sets at this point and so this film is just over three minutes long and it depicts a um, the kind of like the lobby almost or the entryway of what is implied to kind of be a larger castle and as we said a bat flies into the room um, and turns into a man and this man does some magic tricks he summons a large cauldron, he summons some witches, a skeleton, um, and then two men enter the home and um, are sort of uh, accosted by some of these um, beasts and um, 'er Um, Mm -hmm. 'er ne'er-do-wells. And a hot woman. Yes, yeah, and a hot woman. Yes, uh, keeping keeping with the horror tradition, or perhaps inventing the horror tradition of always finding time for a hot woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Classic. What are some things that stuck out to you about this? Because I've kind of described the basics, but are there any other formal elements that you want to draw our attention to? I mean, uh, kind of going into this, um, so... Um, I don't want to like brag or anything, but I do have a bachelor's in film studies. So yes, I... please brag, please brag. <laughs> yes, along with my English literature major, it was a double major. I chose that route. Um, yeah, so going into it, I was kind of familiar with who George Melies was. Um, you you sort of learn about him in all of your introduction to film classes because he was a pretty big pioneer um, in terms of the technicalities of a very early silent film and um his uh, films were kind of known for um incorporating a, like a lot of special effects like that was his thing he was like i don't care about story like i want to do special effects so going into this i was kind of ready to be like okay what are the george melier effects spectacle things we're gonna see and um like now it looks pretty 
basic, I think. Um, but back then, that's um, kind of what people went to go see early films for. They're, like we weren't like in really the the I'm going for the plot or the actors kind of phase yet of film. Early filmmaking was um, was basically like meant to be seen for the spectacle. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah, it was kind of cool. I think just to kind of see the the bat turn into the guy and like the mm -hmm. little little effects where it's like people turn into different things and stuff like that i the first thing that struck me is when the guy appeared i was like oh am i watching the wrong movie is this faust because he looks so much like mistopheles <laughs> <laughs> um and i was just thinking i was like I, oh gosh are we sure this is the first vampire film but you know he turns into a bat so it's like we can't it can't be argued it's the first vampire film <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think that that question kind of is um is like the lore of vampires is like where do we like what makes a vampire is it turning into a bat because pretty significantly like we never see this man drink blood um we don't see any coffin imagery um we don't have a sense of the time of day that this film takes place in so the question of sunlight um and sleeping during the day is never really addressed um but I do agree that it's um, one of the nice things about starting with this is that we're starting with some of like the earliest films that we have um, and your discussion of, um, you know, this idea of spectacle and um, some of our first visual effects. Uh, it's like the phantas the phantasmagoria of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I love the that you can see the strings holding the bat <laughs> up. Um, so cute. Yeah, and the, the way that things kind of pop into existence is almost reminiscent of, like, a jump cut. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm, I'm just um, I'm looking at the, the production page on Wikipedia, and it was filmed outside in the garden of Melier's property in Montreal. Saint-Denis. I'm so sorry. That is as good as my French accent gets. Uh, yes, I think that pronunciation, we, we will do our best over the yes. course of this podcast, um, but we will fail in many, in many situations <laughs> to capture the accents of some of these mm -hmm. um, names and titles. Um, mm -hmm. But that it makes a lot of sense that it was shot outside because this would have um, predated the use of um, the use of set lights by you know five to 15 years mm -hmm. depending on um what you consider to be like kind of more traditional lights used on film sets versus just like a light bulb from from melier to the weekend we gotta shoot our houses <laughs> yeah. <on> <laughs> yes nothing really changes um <laughs> yeah the the author that is um that is the weekend. Um, <laughs> um, oh, one other thing I forgot to mention was I know we've been talking a lot about how the um, main male character turns into a bat, hence making it maybe technically a vampire film, but also at the end, the other um, guy that he's been trying to spook grabs mm -hmm. a crucifix and wards him off with it. Now, could this just be because the character in it is a demonic supernatural entity? Or, you know, we see that um, a lot in subsequent vampire films, which is the use of a crucifix to ward off the vampire. So I don't know, could this technically be the first example of that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, because, I mean, one thing is that the title of this film is The House of the Devil. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously that's a, um, a translation from the French title. Um, yeah, I mean, it is very common, the idea that the devil or, like, a demon that's possessing someone can be warded off or affected by a crucifix. Um, mm -hmm. But it's definitely also true that we see that affecting vampires a lot. Like, the idea that a vampire can't enter a church or can't walk on consecrated ground um, or might be burned by holy water um, mm -hmm. is definitely a very familiar trope, um, and definitely a very, um, kind of tried and true defining feature of a vampire in, like, the Western canon of vampirism. Um, 
So I think that that is another kind of tally in the column <laughs> of like possible vampire. Um, and another kind of um, aspect of like the, the marginalia of this film is the, is it a horror film? Because some people also mm-hmm. consider this to be the first horror film. And that's a more mm-hmm. commonly held opinion than that this is the first vampire film, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's largely attributed to the aesthetics and the, th- and the themes of the piece. Um, this is not the first horror film in the sense that it's the first film meant to frighten um, the audience, but it is considered to be the first film that deals with the idea of like demons and ghosts and witches and... Um, you know, the animated dead in terms of the skeleton that we see. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, but like you're saying, that had a lot more to do with spectacle and the idea of, you know, like being entertained by something that you haven't seen before in early film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, huh. I'm also reading that a single remake was made by Melier one year later under the title The Haunted Castle. Um, and so the two films are confused a lot. So another another auteur tradition of I'm getting it right this time and making it again. Yes, absolutely. And I think very <laughs> much a and very much a um, an aspect of of early cinema history is that you know, at this point we hadn't really hammered out the finer points of copyright and Mm, intellectual property with Nosferatu not to interrupt but (laughs) no no it's totally it it is absolutely like a big part of our um upcoming conversation about (laughs) the undeniable first (laughs) horror film Nosferatu um so I think that that is very much um you know a part of early film history is this idea of like making things again under slightly different names um Mm -hmm. and then just the nature of film distribution where you would um literally give a a film like the reel of your film and mail those around to different theaters different countries different continents and at this time in film history projectionists were you know had a lot of power and influence over how people experienced films um like some of the earliest forms of censorship in cinema history kind of could be argued to be projectionists messing around with the films that they were screening by you know taking out some frames taking out some scenes this is famously something um that affected um the last house on the left Mm. Um, because that was a deeply controversial film and many projectionists would remove portions of the film that they found particularly objectionable um, or grotesque. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's something that, as you said, we're going to talk about with Nosferatu, like many projectionists around Europe and, you know, in America um, would kind of fudge some things, add things, take things away. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, that's absolutely. a, yeah, that's a great thing to point out. Um, Do we have anything else we would like to say about the house of the devil? Um, I think, I think what remains is to, is to um, cast a vote and, um, you know, <laughs> say what, what we think. Um, I personally, agree with film historians that this is the first um horror film however i disagree um in my in my immense power i disagree with film historians (laughs) um that this is the first vampire film i am personally going to take the stance that without blood drinking without the consumption of blood we are not in full vampire territory and you know, I think that is a great barometer to keep for the rest of this series. Do they drink blood or do they not? That can kind of be the, um, you know, how we decide whether they are it is a vampire film or not. I 100% agree. I would not object to this being labeled the first horror film 
first vampire film, no, they lost me when he showed up looking like Mistopheles, so. <laughs> and the fact that he's able to summon all these other kind of beings, you know. Yeah, because, like, I mean, vampires have, I think they can have summoning powers, but, mm, yeah, I don't I know. think... I think they can summon, like, their familiars, like, their their animal, yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, yeah, they're, yes. they're fledglings. Yes. Well, I think that we have kicked things off on a great start with something that we both agree is not a vampire <laughs> film. Um, but it is in the spirit of vampire cinema, and mm-hmm. we are not necessarily going to be able to talk about every single vampire film or television show on this podcast, but we can start at the beginning. And so with that, thank you for listening to our first episode of This Podcast Sucks. Find us where you get your podcasts, follow us on social media, and give us a like. We'd love to hear from you guys, and remember, stay bloodthirsty. Catch our next episode on F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu.